day. I'm Laurie McLean and uh, welcome to my ON3 layout of the uh, Denver and Rio Grande Western uh, based on that in Colorado. I'll be uh, presenting several videos in steps showing how I'm doing installs on ON3 locomotives, precision scale MMIs. So uh, I hope you enjoy what I'm going to be able to show you in the next uh, lot of videos. Cheers. The sound sample panel. And we'll just have a listen to the Rio Grande uh, RGS 41 whistle. Here's the uh, Denver and Rio Grand 5 chime. And the next one. Denver, Rio Grande and Western 5 chime. Rio Grande and Western Five Chime. Oh, beautiful. Here's a quill. So that's the three uh, Rio Grande, uh, Rio Grande Western, and the uh, first one you heard was the uh, Rio Grande Southern number 41 C19. And we'll just run this up. You got some motor here, and I'll just put this on one. There's one. Look at this. This is just brilliant. That's just on one. Motor is just clicking over. And we're just going to get to the next chuff. And the hiss. Take that off the course. This is the K36 number 480 that I'll be uh, putting the uh, beta wow into version 4. And I'll do a uh, comprehensive install and show all the bits and pieces that go with it. Having the actions is a bit more fun. And get the bell. Thank <laughs> you. 
fix the movement. That's the next one. Okay, there's the ring that I've made there now that's going to sit, um, sit on. You can see the thickness of it there. So that's going to be glued inside the loco body and then the speaker will fit up against it. And that, um, that curved outer diaphragm and the cone will clear the, um, the gasket, which is just a space that it, so that the, uh, there's free movement without the uh, cone or diaphragm touching the loco body and colouring the Okay, sound. I'll cut the speaker down. This is what I'm going to use, which is this uh, response. Uh, I'll buy these. These are, these are the full range. So that's how they come. And I just cut it down to get the round so it's going to fit inside the boiler. Get up inside so it's going to go that way. So it's going to be facing backwards. And that slot that I've got in there is going to allow the sounds to come out of the locomotive from the cylinders and everything. The only one that doesn't come out is water fill. And I'm uh, not really worried about that at the moment. Most of them are up the front. Let's have a listen. I know the sound's loud, it's just still default. It's a bit tinny, so let's just put it in an enclosure and hear the difference. Now you see what an enclosure does. See the tinniness? Big difference. That's what I'm saying. The um, back of the speaker has got the porting. So once I put the, uh, the, the gasket there so that there's plenty of movement there for the um, cone to move in and out, that'll fit uh, inside and be clear uh, so this won't hit anywhere inside the body. Just have a listen to the, um, to the quill because I love this quill. Just get a flat enclosure in there. Four. And take it off. Is there a difference? Okay, the um Soldering station I use is temperature up and down, so we can go up or we can go down. That's very important. So somewhere around about 340, 350 is where I do my normal soldering, and there's the size of my tip. That's the one I use for surface mount leads and for all my general um, wiring on air. The tools I'm using, just some basic tools, files, um, the cutters. I just use these. Um, these cutters for trimming all my Dakota wire, uh, pliers, the screwdriver, which I've magnetised. I've got uh, in here, excuse the hand, heat shrink tube, all sorts of stuff uh, got in there. Double sided tapes and especially the, the capped on tape and uh, all my phosphor bronze wires and uh, and brass tube that I use and then up the top I've got the nickel nickel silver wire that I use a lot for the animations I've got uh, punches, diamond tips, brass shim, odds and sods electrical, styrene and then my printed circuit board uh, that's virtually the wet workbench that I've got I use a lot of this Loctite super glue I use a lot of the CRC products, which is a contact cleaner for cleaning all the old grease out, and the CRC 226 for the track and uh, any of the pickups. Now, while we're talking about pickups, we have a close look at this loco here, and you can see that I've run an extra wire here on the left hand side. Um, the right hand, of course, is got the whole body alive with the right rail power and so the wipers that are on that come with the MMI I've actually 
uh, attached a, um, another Dakota, black Dakota wire and run that through down to the back and then I put a bit of circuit board there for the left rail and the right and the right rail so you, you, your body is picking up off the, uh, the red rail red wire picking up uh, from the right right hand rail and the left hand rail these are all the insulated drivers and I've added the extra wire so every wheel is now picking up power hence the uh, loco can be run without the tender and there's a machine motor that I put in there which is five pole rather than the three pole that, uh, that came with the loco.